Yo, my peoples, what's up? Welcome to Shelf Stories, the channel that tells tales from games, books, and life. I am your host, Jason. Thank you so, so much for stopping by. This is the latest episode in a series that I used to call Shelf Reflections, but I'm just going to go for it and call it what it is. Good trouble. To quote from uh, the African-American activist, uh, Daily Departed, John Lewis, who says that in order to create a truly multicultural, multi-perspective society, and by extension, a multicultural board gaming community, sometimes you got to get into some good trouble. You have to be willing to say, uh, have difficult conversations, educate folks, as, as painful as it might be sometimes. These conversations have to happen. We have to do the work. This is not a space where I'm going to indulge in a lot of fun board gaming content. Uh, I got that. I got that on the Dice Tower. I got that on the One Stop Co-op Shop, Else One Shelf Stories. That's your 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 jam. Then go for it. Uh, here, I want to have the hard discussions and educate folks as much as I possibly can. So the second qualification I'm going to make is that this uh, episode will contain explicit language. Uh, we're dealing with a very difficult subject, and I don't feel like censoring it. I don't think that soft pedaling what is being said, what is being presented, is going to help us really confront what we're dealing with. And, and I feel like if we censor ourselves, we're going to uh, re- deny ourselves of tools that we need to really look this thing in the face and move forward past it. So you've been warned. If you're not, that's not something that's come before you, then you know, please move on to other content. So this episode is um, about two forms of racism. Racism is not something that I have discussed in previous content. I've been dealt with, you know, slavery and colonialism, all these other things, but I've very been very careful to avoid the term racist and racism because they they mean very specific things, and I don't want to be um, unclear. But it's gotten to the point where we have to face it uh, square up and, and deal with it because uh, one type of racism emerged in a big way today. Uh, on Twitter that was revealed uh, by a person who is who I follow uh, named Danny, a uh, board game content creator, not someone I know personally, not someone I've ever spoken to, but you know, when they're on your Twitter feed, you kind of you feel like you know them, right? <laughs> anyway, they shared that. This DM talking about, you know, effing chinks and chicks with, you know, you could see it, uh, and just it, this is racism. If you don't think that this is racism, if you somehow justify this in your head uh, that this is this could be called anything but racism, then we are a problem and you probably shouldn't be watching this video anyway. But I think most of us who are watching this video can agree, racism, right? So then there's a second type of racism, which we don't know what to do with, really. Uh, it's more implicit. It's not explicit like what I showed you. It's more maybe even benign seeming or unintentional. Uh, you know, is it it's merely offensive? It's only words. Or should we get offended? And, you know, is it as bad as everything else? And blah, 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 blah. Um, cause a lot of kerfuffle and brouhaha in the community, whatever word you want to use. Uh, but it is just kind of like a different thing. It's more in that really gray area. And we're having a hard time kind of parsing it. So let me break it down. Uh, it's actually the, the, the start of all this stuff, uh, that the tweet that uh, Danny received. So if you haven't been following Twitter, God bless you, by the way. <laughs> if you follow avoided Twitter, I'll break it down as fast as I possibly can. Get through it. So the Italian designer, Daniel Tassini, he designed one of my favorite games, Stay With The Walk On, uh, also Zolkin's few other games, uh, T-Series, so to speak. Uh, so he had a private conversation online that was leaked out to the world. Uh, and here it is in Italian, and then there's an f- effort to translate it into English, which is, a, um, from what I gather, it's like a response to the idea that orcs shouldn't be depicted as black. And he goes off in this whole thing. It's kind of like, you know, rambly and everything. It's like a, a boomer rant, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, why, why are you interrupting my token? Blah, blah, blah. Grognard or whatever it is. Okay, fine. I've heard it a million times. So then goes on and says something that is kind of like caused all the, you know, the stuff. I use the N-word all the time, my friends. Depends on context. I use it all the time. Uh, you know, all this, all this sort of stuff. So... It was pointed out that the N-word means something different in Italian than it does in English, so it kind of like, there was a cleavage, 
right there. Now we're in the gray area. It's not explicit racism, but it's in this kind of middle space. What do we do? Um, and so, you know, and then, but whatever it was, it was whatever it was, it was, it was problematic. The board game and board game company and the community asked for an apology. It was, the apology was given. And, uh, it was kind of like, you know, I didn't mean it, so to speak. I'm sorry I did it, but I didn't mean it that way. And we, it just kind of came off as more defending himself than defend, than actually, you know, rectifying what was done. So then, you know, all sorts of stuff happens that can yada yada that, but you, you could tell. It's now like the desire is in kind of hot water. So the next step of that is Rado. Rado, who we all know and love, Rado runs through uh, very, very popular, <laughs> top five most popular board, board gaming content creators, right? Uh, so he goes on his podcast and he defends Tassini. Uh, defends, says that he was kind of set up, you know, the, the, the quote was taken out of context and, you know, there's a lot of translation issues and, you know, why is the Twitter mobs you know, going after him, going after his livelihood, he could be ruined, blah, blah, um, it really kind of coming hard on, coming down hard on defending this and, you know, just kind of putting himself out there for that. Names, names during his podcast, and I understand that he's released a different version of the podcast that takes away the names uh, of a lot of different board gaming content creators who he just, you know, it's kind of putting on blast for various reasons. Um, and then, you know, so that, you know, <laughs> that podcast kind of goes through the internet uh, webs and a lot of folks on the progressive side of things respond. This is unacceptable. What are you doing, Rado? Um, a couple of people flag the, flag the issue that this is not only inaccurate, but dangerous. And this is the context for uh, Danny receiving the, the text. Danny was a very vocal critic of Rado. And then so he got the DM of like, you know, basically leave Rado alone. So that's a chain of events, walking it back a couple of steps though to the original Mr. Cassini's comments. Let me say I know in certain terms that they're racist. I don't know if the person is racist. I have no idea and I'm very uncomfortable. And that's a very high bar for me to meet to say a person is racist. But the statement is racist. I don't, I don't have a lot of patience for the generational argument or the cultural argument because this stuff is changing. Culture is changing. It, it, nothing stays the same for very long, especially in this globalized world uh, This where social media is breaking down the geographical boundaries, the generational boundaries. This is, it's mostly young people who have made the decision that, you know, ways of speaking that were kind of in the enclaves, the ethnic enclaves. And, you know, the Italian, uh, that, you know, that kind of older mentality, I don't know Italian, but I know it very well from my mentality. You know, uh, it's, it's rare that I'll hear at the domino table uh, amongst older folks. Why are these young people telling me how I can speak? Blah, blah, blah. Um, younger people have a problem across cultures. So let's look at it from another perspective. Uh, think about the goal. Think about the ultimate vision of a multicultural, multi-perspective, diverse, welcoming community as a whole. Does do statements belong uh, in that space? No, they don't. We can't talk like we're in our living rooms. We can't, if we're going to be in this bigger space, especially if we've broken down the borders and we're trying to create a big old board a welcoming board gaming tent, then all of us, every single one of us, I'm talking about me, I'm talking about, you know, a PLC, I'm talking about a different, you know, whether you're on the left, right, up, down, I don't care who you are, every single one of us has to change our language and, you know, take out those problematic words and phrases. It's not just Mr. Sassini, it's all of us. If we want to fit in this big tent, well, then we have to adopt a public consensus type language, so to speak. And I don't care what language the N-word is in, it doesn't belong in that tent, full stop, point blank. So I can hear someone now, someone calling me out, Jason, you're full of BS. That would, people got mad, people would, they didn't want to create no big tent or anything like that, they wanted to scalp, they wanted to punish him, they wanted to shame him because uh, we somehow get off on you know shaming people and bringing people down, bringing the white man down, all kind of stuff, blah, 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 blah. I heard a lot in DMs and conversations, all kind of stuff, something like that. Okay, here's why we got mad. And we did get mad. Oh, we did get mad. It wasn't a mob. I'm going to say something about that mob word in just a second. But we got mad because we know, POC know from in our hearts, people who are aware that 
when you allow, when you create a permission structure for racism to the implicit stuff to just be there, you hollow out the space. You in, you, in subtle ways, you people get pushed away. You know, it's like, I don't want to be there. I don't want to be in that space. Get out of here. I don't want to be around some crazy uncle saying the N-word. I don't want to be around this thing. Get out of here. So you hollow out the space. And when you have that permission structure where that stuff is acceptable, well, then here comes racism one. Racism two is the soil. Racism one is the flower or the weed that grows up in that permission structure like a flower out of soil. It's inevitable. And I think there's a lot of naivete about that on the part of people who want to defend this stuff. There's a lot of naivete about, oh, where did this come from? I, it, it, <laughs> it gives me, <laughs> I get the, <clears throat> again, when people say, I'm shocked. I'm shocked that, that, that people think this way in 2021. I'm shocked, uh, you know, that, you know, the people stormed the Capitol, white supremacies. How, how can we do this in, a, in this world? It never went away. I'm a student of history, along with being a try as as aware POC as I can be. So I have <laughs> reading the history, knowing American history, was there at the beginning, there in the middle, there during nineteen, you know, uh, all the all the victories always had a backlash. All the victories always had a backlash, and you know, it it seemed to go away. You know, the the arc of justice bend upward. Ooh, well, there was a giant snapback, wasn't there? intolerance true racism and when i talk about racism one what i'm really talking about is fear and intimidation of non-white peoples that's what i'm talking about threats putting you in your place with the threat of force that's what i'm talking about that's racism one and when you allow racism two to just be there you hollow out Diverse peoples and racism, one, will take root. It's inevitable. We all see it. As POC, we see it. That's why we got mad. So I'm, I'm going to continue uh, talking to my imaginary uh, person who's going back to me. Oh, oh, you talk about fear and intimidation, huh? Well, that's what cancel culture is. That's what the cancel mob does. You know, when people demand people's jobs and that they get fired and whatever, like, what are you doing, right? Aren't you, you know, causing fear and intimidation for uh, people who are trying to just work and keep their jobs, huh? <laughs> okay. What... Calling it a mob, and this is what Rado did. Rado called it a mob, and I'm gonna have to really call him out on that. If you're watching Rado, I, this is where I really had the problem, biggest problem with your podcast, with respect, right? Because like, I want a conversation about this, and I don't just want to be shaming. Mobs want scalps, mobs want violence. That is not what most of us who spoke up wanted. What we wanted was one word. Accountability doesn't see. Am, am I splitting hairs here? No, I'm not splitting hairs. Accountability is very clear. There was an opportunity for forgiveness. There was an opportunity to okay. Um, can, this was about. This is a problem. We are hurt. Want to bring it back, right? We want to bring it back, but we got to hear it. We we has to be accountable. There has to be actions and meat behind what you're saying. It can't just be words. It can't just be a bunch of uh, doo-doo out of your mouth to placate what, what's going on. And that's kind of what happened. Like, you know, we, 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 we looked at it. We were mad, but, you know, we looked at it. And if the, the, the proper steps were taken, if, the, if things were rectified, if conversations happened, if action steps were taken, then it's like, all right, well, that was good. Whew, close call. <laughs> Whew, that would have been what, what happened. It didn't happen, so people continue to get mad. So here's an important point. That is not mob behavior. Using that word is wrong. It creates a false equivalence. And that's another thing that happened during that conversation. And other conversations, well, the left and the right, they're both mad. They're both doing the same thing. So here's where I have a problem with the word mob. Because mobs don't bother with accountability. That's I can only speak for myself and like what I see from and what I hear from conversations. I think most of us want that multicultural thing and we're not willing 
anymore to just accept it quietly. We want to fight for it. And this fighting, are we fighting to kill? No, we're not fighting to kill. We're, we're, but we are fighting, trying to find that balance. Right? It's a very hard balance. To, and if we mess up that balance, then that's on us. But we are trying to find a balance. What about the other side? What about the, that, that far bleeding edge? Racism won. What do they want? Well, my friend that uh, sent the DM to Danny told you what they want. Go home. Go home. Go home. Go home. If you're a POC, you've heard that before. You know what that means. Go home. Stay quiet. Or else. You want fear and intimidation, that's fear and intimidation. You want cancel culture, if that's not cancel culture, I don't know what cancel culture is. It is complete and utter garbage that that someone who wants, the, the people who fight for a multicultural space are accused of being cancel culture when we get loud. This is canceling. Or I don't know what canceling is. So this is passionate. This is you know really important to me. Uh, I you know I I I'm a radical for this stuff. I'm a radical for a multicultural, multi-perspective world. I'm a radical for education, and I'm a radical for compassion. So this is why I'll walk back the emotion. I want to bear my genuine feelings and my genuine language. But I want to do it for the sake of accomplishing these goals that I think we all want. I just don't want us to take the easy way out. So, you know, I invited Rodder to watch the video and, and make responses. I invite anybody to, to watch the video and make responses. Did I articulate the position well? That I come on too strong? Um, you know, I'm, I'm, very, I'm always kind of processing my thoughts and my, you know, everything. Uh, so I'm open to discussion. I'm open to um you know, did I present the position well? Do people agree with it? Do people not? So please, uh, in the comments, um, you know, on Twitter, everything like that, wherever I share it out, uh, please, we will continue this conversation. Um, but I'm not open to changing my mind on this stuff. I may kind of like, you know, I learn different perspectives. There's always like kind of minor things to kind of change. But uh, my core position that those two kinds of racism, the benign stuff and the actual in your face, fear and intimidation, racism, they're related. One is the soil upon which the second grows if it's allowed to be unchecked. Don't think I'm gonna come off that one, but I will, I will talk to people and I will uh, try as best I can to understand people's perspectives. So this is Jason reminding you if you can change your mind, if you can change the world. So until next time, cause some good trouble.